excuse me? Uh, well, it, it gave an opportunity. It was uh, the bye week gave us opportunity to have time to, to be able to make the moves necessary, what we feel like uh, moving forward. No, it's my call. Well, I mean, again, when you're 0 and 8 and you stub your toe as many time offensively as we have, there's uh, it becomes a time, and there was enough time that uh, it was evident that we needed to, to make a move. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty like I say, it's my decision, and so. Uh, it, you know, I've been thinking about it for quite some time, and and uh, this, the time during the buy seemed to be the right time because it gives me an opportunity to uh, to put a plan in place. When you look at what you have offensively, do you feel like there's more to tap into than you have so far? Like the personnel is there for better results. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, preseason nobody would have envisioned that we'd be in a position, uh, and I'm not saying that you know we're saying that we're going to be undefeated, but at the same time, nobody saw 0 and 8 either, so. Uh, it's a good time to reflect and, and you can learn a lot about yourself and about the people around you and the people that, that you get to see every day also exactly when you're in this position. Is your team ready to go on the track? Yes. What is his role then? Uh, he'll, be, he'll be repositioned on our staff, probably more so on the defensive side of the football. Well, I mean, Jarris certainly will have his twist and, and things that he wants to do, things that he's – you know, lean on his experience, what he's done in the past as a quarterback, and that's kind of what, uh, you know, that I'll let Jarris expound on that when he gets up here. You and uh, Luke have created pretty tough runs with a long time. How difficult is this for you? Well, again, I've got to put all feelings aside. I mean, certainly we've been, we've been around each other since 1999, and we sat down three weeks ago, you know, and, and had a frank discussion. And, and uh, you know, it's one of those deals where it's pro football, and I've got to make the uh, do what's best interest for this football team. They hired me to, to be the overseer for the football team, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're certainly hoping that we come back and we play better football because if, uh, you know, special teams-wise, I feel like we've played pretty strong, especially with the, with as many young kids as we have. I think we've, we've been very competitive. We've been up and down defensively, certainly undisciplined. So if we can address those areas and then play better offense uh, down the stretch, I feel like we can improve. Can we expect some more moves from Logan McCoy? Excuse me? Yeah, I mean, we're going to look at everything right now. Again, when you're 0 and 8, you have to look at everything. You have to look inward, number one. And, and like I say, it's a good time to reflect and, and find a lot about yourself as well. So we, uh, we're going to look at every phase of what we do. Chris, how is Dan managing the, the, the three roles that you have uh, in terms of the workload, the ability to, to be effective in all of it? How yeah, I mean, it, it's the same as it's always been. I mean, the same number of hours in every day. And uh, so. Now, like I say, it gives me an opportunity during the bye week to put a plan in place for the second half of the season. Do you envision maintaining those roles for the rest of the season? Absolutely. Were you aware of last year more than the reason why you made the call by the fact that you lost by 100 with Jarrett as opposed to last year with Logan? And if you're exactly put in the field, were you aware of that and kind of maybe just forgot? Well, it's unfortunate because, again, these guys, I know how hard that our entire coaching staff works and what the, you know, and how much our team means to them. And that's unfortunate, but I understand their frustration, certainly. I mean, uh, it's not like we just get up in the morning and, and want to be in this position, but we are, you know, where we're at, and now it's uh, an opportunity for us to move forward. Well, certainly, I mean, I think having a familiarity with our roster and knowing what our players can and can't do, uh, knowing the terminology, I said, you know, I, I certainly think that that gives them an advantage. Chris, does the physical uh, capacity of these old days require you to lean on the additional coaches? Uh, you know what? I mean, it's it's one of those things where you just have to look at what's best for the team. I mean, the football operations caps not not looked on favorably by any of the organizations, and and I do think it's hurt the quality of play across the league, but. Uh, you know, that's not something that, that we're here to talk about. We've got to look at what we've got to do uh, personally to try to fix what we've, uh, what we've got right now. Can you evaluate the quarterback position? Is Taylor still considered your starter? Is it an open competition moving forward? 
well, certainly his confidence been, has been rattled. You can look at the film. You can watch the TV copies of the games and look at, you know, his reaction to plays and that type of thing. So certainly his confidence has been, uh, has been hurt. Uh, I, I look at it like a starting pitcher, you know, in baseball. They don't just throw their starting pitcher out when he, when he loses his curveball in the seventh. They bring in people to try to help him. So we're going we're gonna to look at all avenues. Uh, I mean, Trey's going to get a, a solid look. Uh, Daggy's going to get a solid look, and then we're not going to throw, you know, Taylor, you know, out the door. I mean, Taylor's going to – he comes from a, a very good family. He's got high character. He'll do our third down stuff, and he will stay prepared. He's not going to not go into the game, that type of thing. So he's a, he's a solid kid. Well, it's kind of like with Mac. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I think that's in today's society, that's, you know, that's kind of what, what happens. And uh, if we win games, he probably gets too much credit. And then when uh, we lose games, he probably gets too much credit as well. I mean, so it's, uh, it's one of those things that comes with the territory. Well, I, I mean, the other night, I mean, I was actually, you know, looking at the situation. We were 0-7 starting the game, and, I, you know, one of the guys commented that, you know, one of the coaches was like, man, this is a good crowd for, for an 0-7 football team. So I was really impressed, and I, I certainly hope that the fans continue to, you know, it's a great organization. Eventually it's going to flip, and when it does, again, we'll get back to where, where you know, Edmonton should be. And so I certainly hope that the, uh, that the fans know how hard – not only the not only the the coaches but the players. I mean, the players are here yesterday, one day after the game, working at camp, and and they uh, it means a lot to them. All right, all right. See y'all. Hi, how you doing? Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, you know, coming back from having a, a quarterback background, I think hopefully that, uh, you know, I can definitely get through to the quarterbacks with my play call and uh, help them with execution on the field. Um, you know, if I, if I decide to go up top and be in the box, then, um, you know, I can, I can be their eyes and ears from the sky as opposed to just being on the sidelines. And have you decided where, where you'll be? As of right now, I'm leaning to go upstairs, and, and that way, you know, I can be more comfortable, see things from uh, the all 24 as opposed to the view that I get on the sideline right now. Uh, like Coach kind of touched on, I think it's just more of confidence. You know, when you get hit a few times in a game, uh, you can tend to get a little rattled sometimes. And we got to remember, Taylor's still a young quarterback, right? Like he hasn't been here and been playing in this league for a very long time. So he's very young. Uh, and like Coach said, we're not just throwing him out the door. Um, uh, he's working on his confidence issues and, and things that he knows that he needs to get better at. And uh, we're going to continue to work with him. And uh, hopefully, you know, one day he'll, he may be back in that starting role. Well, just like I mentioned before, um, you know, we have to definitely call things that suit to the quarterback, uh, as well as potentially, um, you know, pushing the ball down the field a little bit more, giving our guys that can stretch the field opportunities. Um, you know, it's hard to go uh, 18, 12 to 18 play drives in this league. Um, you know, we don't have Ricky Ray here. We don't have Mike Riley here. We have the guys that we have. So we have to do things that, that, that suit uh, their strong points and, and brings out uh, their capabilities as playing quarterbacks. Uh, it's going to be uh, Daigie and uh, Trey Ford taking snaps, as well as Taylor still gets some snaps. But, uh, you know, Coach and I talked at length last night about this, and, um, you know, it's just time for a change. It's time for, you know, one of those guys to hopefully grab the bull by the horns and take this. And uh, like I mentioned before, that, you know, all three, Taylor's gonna, still going to be very supportive of those guys and, uh, you know, the best man to win the job. Well, he's young, same thing, he's young. I, I know he won't be perfect, you know, he'll make mistakes as well, but, you know, the one attribute that he does have and that he does do well is run with the football. So, um, you know, when things aren't there or if the pocket's breaking down, um, you, you know, that kid has world-class speed, in my opinion. So, uh, from that standpoint, I know he'll be uh, more apt to use his legs when he can. Is there a style you think you'd like to, it's not that you're gonna give it away to us, but mm -hmm. the way you think the game should be called? Well, well, like I said, I'm, I'm definitely gonna try to call the game more to the quarterbacks 
uh, abilities. Uh, you know, try to get KB more involved, Kevin Brown more involved. Um, you know, Dylan Mitchell. Um, you know, um, uh, you know, just all the guys, all the guys that I feel that are going to help us uh, win, and, and you know, that need to have the ball in their hand in order for us to be successful offensively. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we're just constantly uh, giving those guys positivity. Um, you know, last week we had a great week of preparation. Like, you would not think that we're an 0 and 8 team the way we approach it week in and week out. Um, you know, these guys, uh, you know, I think they're so young, they don't know any different, right? So they're just waiting to get a win. I think we get that one win, I think it'll spark us in the right direction. Um, you know, it's, it's always difficult to take this change. Uh, you know, Steve's a dear friend of mine, and uh, I know he'll be very supportive of me. Um, you know, he, he understands that this is a business and things happen. So, um, you know, it is what it is. But at the same time, uh, you know, he's very supportive. You just got to be disappointed in anything. It, exactly right. He's just disappointed in anything. He's been, put, he's been putting the work in. He's put his best foot forward. And, and, you know, it's unfortunate that we're in the position that we're in. But we must move forward from here. Well, but just, just the change in general, right? Sometimes it's hard with the change, but I think our guys will be very receptive to it. Uh, we're not just going to, you know, do an, uh, a complete overall on the whole entire offense, right? Uh, I think we'll still uh, do the things that we do well. And just like I just, you know, touched on earlier, you know, I'll try to do things well um, that suit the quarterback that's in the game. Yep, no problem. Yep, no problem.